How will the, the social housing plan, the $10 billion social housing plan unveiled by Anthony Albanese work in practice? Yeah, so this, the idea is that we have a social housing fund, a housing, um, which invests in 20,000 houses, uh, particularly targeted at women escaping domestic violence, but also 10,000 affordable ho housing properties that go to uh, prioritise frontline workers. So this is a real gap in the housing system at the moment. And it's also a great way for the Commonwealth to have a lasting legacy in terms of some of the recovery from this pandemic to actually be, you know, growing our housing asset base, but also making sure that we're meeting the needs of people whose housing at the moment is not being met. And, you know, I think you've had plenty of people on your show talk about the, the need for housing, both for those who are escaping domestic violence, for veterans returning uh, from serving our country, uh, but also those who are homeless. How will the plan be funded? So the idea is that we set up a, a $10 billion fund, that it would be managed by the Future Fund. Uh, and as you know, the Future Fund manages quite a number of funds now. And then investments would be made off the returns of that fund. Uh, and that would go in every year to either building new stock, but also supporting community housing providers uh, to provide those services to people. So it's a, a really clever way of, I think, growing an asset, but meeting the needs of the community at the same time time. The other, one of the other key uh, items announced last night by Anthony Albanese was the, the apprenticeships for the green energy sector. How many are we talking about and how will that work? Yes, yeah, so the idea is that we would support about 10,000 new apprenticeships in the new energy sector. So at the moment, that's an area where um, people are telling us there are skill shortages emerging. So it's a great way of incentivising people into training up into these jobs that are going to be around uh, for many years. Uh, and that you would pay the, apprentice, the apprentices themselves uh, to do those, that training and get into that industry. And we know it's a huge growth industry. I think this is one of the key areas where you'll see difference between Labor and the Coalition in that we actually think that the opportunities in new energy and renewable energy are a great opportunity for our economy and something that we, which we should embrace. Well, there isn't a key difference when it comes to spending on social services. We know Josh Frydenberg, the Treasurer, spent up big on Tuesday night in areas like health and aged care and disability services. Uh, Labor's traditional stomping ground, if you like. Mm. So d did that increase the degree of difficulty last night for Anthony Albanese? Not at all. I think uh, you saw a real difference between Anthony, what Anthony said in his speech last night and what the uh, government served up in their budget. I think part of it's about spending, but it's also about the type of leader you want to be. It's the type of vision you have for the country. It's the type of future you want. And, um, you know, Anthony was really clear on that last night. You know, it's things like recognising our First Nations people as the original custodians of the land in our birth certificate. You know, it's, it's values, it's leadership, it's purpose of government that sets the difference, I think, between Anthony uh, Albanese and Scott Morrison at the moment, and that's part of it. The investments in key areas, that's standard stuff that governments need to do, you know, and we've got a, op we've got a government who's kind of been walking away from that and saying the surplus is more important that is, than essential services, and now they've had to change their tune. That's actually a good outcome for the Australian people to make sure those services which have been neglected, like aged care, are being looked after. Now, uh, Anthony Albanese held back some of the, uh, the more sensitive uh, policy decisions uh, with the election either later this year or early next year, one of which, as you know, was whether or not Labor will back the so-called Stage 3 tax cuts, which would see a flat 30% tax rate for incomes from 45000 to 200000 Seems to be quite an active debate in the Labor Party on that. Do you support, in principle, the Stage 3 tax cuts? Yeah, so we've been saying for some time that we will make it clear uh, before the election what our position is on that. We wanted to see the budget, we wanted to see the budget figures uh, before we take any decisions. So we'll go through our processes on that, but we're not going to be rushed by the government uh, screaming at us about it. We'll be clear to the Australian people, we'll be clear about what our fiscal plan is, we'll be clear about what our policies are. Our focus has been on making sure low and middle income earners get tax cuts, particularly in a, in a time when they're not getting wage rises. Um, that's Labor's position. Uh, it's been held for a long time. But we will have a look at these uh, 
tax cuts, stage three, as you call yep. them, they're three years away. I mean, we said at the time, you know, it's hard to bake in these kind of tax cuts so far away. That's what the government's chosen to do. But we'll look at it as part of our full package of offering to the Australian okay, people before the election. In principle, where do you stand on them? I, I know the Labor Party's yet to reach a formal position, but w where does Katie Gallagher stand on stage three? Do you, or do you think they're a fair deal or that the high income earners don't deserve a tax cut? Well, I'll have those discussions with my colleagues, you know. I, I think you can't look at it in isolation of everything else, you know. You can't say, um, well, we'll s you'll support that, but then you have a whole range of other policies that you want to do as well. So we have to have a look at it. I I'm part of that discussion, clearly, as Finance Minister, and we will make it clear in terms of our fiscal plan going forward. We haven't made that decision, Michael, mm. and I'm not going to have a, a quiet discussion with you on, um, you know, national TV quite, well, about it before that, it. Before that decision it. is taken. I'll have it with my colleagues, I'll share my views and when we make a decision okay. everybody will know about it. We look forward to that decision whenever it's made. <laughs> Katie Gallagher, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks so much Michael.